Madmind promised us, uh, fuck it. Paranoid was announced a couple years ago and even had a demo, and if I go any further into the development cycle at the start of the video as I am wont to do, the entire rest would be unnecessary. So what they promised was the story of Patrick Coleman, a man desperately searching for his sister who may or may not have been kidnapped by a cult in the 1980s. The only problem is he's suffering from severe paranoid schizophrenia, and the dangerous cult might just be a man in a satellite zapping his teeth and choking his cat. We don't really know yet. But what they showed off was a game that would focus on some minor stealth elements and brutal hand-to-hand -hand combat involving executions along the lines of Manhunt, with a wee bit of screwing with the player's perception to tell a story heavily featuring old VHS camcorders. Then they announced it was going to be involved in their new Mad Mind Cinematic Universe and had its Halloween release date delayed, and then on December 15th in the year of our darkest timeline of 2023, the game launched to nearly 100 negative reviews within two hours. This is Paranoid. My life is one big mess. My whole willpower fell apart a long time ago. Fuck you, asshole! Fuck you, asshole! Sincerely with love! Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ow. Ooh, yeah. You don't know a thing! You don't have a clue! Your bell never rings! Still you're being you! are in fact the gentleman whose name is not Rick and you got some mental issues. You wake up from a drunken what the fuck ever and decide it's time to go fill your prescription and head off to the Equinox Hotel to find your errant sister, Rachel. Huh. Well, all right then. This plot device- Rachel! This plot device, which is brought up within the first five minutes of the game, is completely abandoned, but rest assured my naughty little children of the night, we'll get there. I may be an aging edgelord, but I like to spread the edging around, so just hold on a little tighter. Before we head out, we have a chance to spy on our neighbor, who showers in her underwear, making her the weirdo in this situation, receive a call from our ghostly ghost sister, and have a nice hallucination involving a baby being trapped in a washing machine. Then it's time to put on our sick health and sanity monitoring watch, and make our way downtown walking fast, faces past, and we are pharmacy bound. On our way out, we can dig through our neighbor's trash for some delicious treasures, find an Alex Jones style note, and for some reason fist fuck our mailbox. From there, we find Patty delving through a series of hallucinations which then take us through the sewers, a quarantine camp, the basement of a laundromat which leads us to a meat processing facility, a cult compound, and then the game ends with a full runtime of 90 minutes in which here is the ending played in its entirety. All my adult life, I've been falling into a dark abyss. This falling has been going on over a dozen years, there is no end in sight. At first, I was scared, but now I eagerly await the moment when I finally reach the bottom. Will cold concrete or cold water be waiting for me there? At this falling speed, it doesn't matter. In the end, 
I will still shatter against the bottom. Rachel? I is that you, sister? If I knew back then what I knew now... At the end of the 90 minute playtime, you have learned that your sister was being groomed by her father to be a sacrifice for a Native American cult to the Red Goddess, jump down a pit and get a 10 second flashback to just before you murder your parents, then the credits roll and just stop and go back to the main menu in a manner credits have never done in any game in history. Did you notice that I didn't mention the Equinox Hotel? This is important. Please write it down. There will be a test later. Thank you for your participation. So why exactly is that important? Why was it so important to mention at the start of the game? Why was there a focus on it in the demo? Remember that whole shift to the Mad Mind cinematic universe I mentioned? Remember the Halloween release getting delayed? The reason the Equinox Hotel got abandoned the second it was mentioned and Finding Your Sister was never the plot after it was mentioned and the game is 90 minutes long is because the MCU wasn't exactly slapped on top of the game. At some point, the heads at Mad Mind scrapped the entire plot of the game and everything that had been made and demanded the people working on it cobble together this garbage. And I know this because the game has a B story. If you choose to stay in the apartment, you instead get a long series of events in which the game tells you exactly which room to walk to and what to interact with for an hour while you get two Vidya jump scares, murder your neighbor, and if you thought the main story's ending was bad, here is the ending of the B story entirely unedited. I'm waiting for you! Dr. Thomas, open up, please! This game is a scam. And make no mistake, these aren't my only gripes with the game, so break out the lube and bite the pillow, because we are in fact going deeper. Patroclos has an inventory where you store all of your lovely pickups. You also have a quick access inventory set to the directional pad if you're on controller. There's just one fucking problem. It's not used for anything. Right swaps between the one weapon you can have equipped and your bare fists. Up auto uses a health drink or your meds. And no, you will not be told which one you're about to use until you use one. So if you need to grab some pills and press up, you will use a health drink and then it will tell you that the next is probably going to be your pills should you desire, desire, des desiree, should you desire to press the button again. And if you check the quick access bar before you press up, it will show empty. Left and down on the D-pad do not get used at all, ever. You cannot equip anything to them, and you will never acquire anything that you will need to equip to them. Which becomes really fucking funny when you're playing the B-path, and at some point it tells you to turn on the flashlight, but the game never really tells you how. Mouse and keyboard? Obviously you just press F, but the game doesn't tell you this. I mean, if you've ever played an FPS on keyboard before, you instinctively know flashlight is F. Oh, uh, hey guys, it's the post-production Necro Swanson just butting in to tell you that, um, I'm kind of fucking stupid.
And actually, if you go into the settings and check the key bindings, it tells you to press the right bumper to turn on the flashlight. Only problem is, nowhere in the game, despite there being prompts for everything on the screen, does it ever bring that up. So I'm stupid. But it wouldn't be a Necro Swanson joint if I didn't fuck everything up. The B movie, as I mentioned, is just a long list of being told which room to go to and what to interact with, but it's where most of the Mad Mind cinematic universe comes in, and it mostly focuses on a horror story of hallucinations. It sucks, but it's obvious that's where most of the remaining effort after the hack job went. The main story, however, is just a sequence of nonsense that does nothing but allude to how much was axed. The Equinox Hotel is never mentioned after the first time, there's a pandemic that is going around and it's causing horrendous growth in the sewers that glowies are spraying chemicals at, there's the fucking super gore nest, there's a single quote-unquote boss quote-unquote fight against something that can't harm you unless you absolutely force it to, the Native American cult is never explored, the eight-foot-tall guy who chases you at the end is never hinted at, explained, or serves any real purpose, the relationship your neighbor had with your sister is meaningless fluff that goes nowhere, and all the hints about your mother being crazy and potentially sticking your infant brother in a washing machine pops up twice and is never explained or even hinted at a second or third time throughout the game. Did I say twice and then twice? I meant thrice. I meant four. You know what? This game is so bad it's destroyed my fucking IQ. Leave me the fuck alone! But where was I? Oh yes, what's the thing about the tentacles coming out of the washing machine to grab you? Nothing! It happens twice and is never explained. Why is Patrick having visions of hell in the quarantine camp? No real reason, never mentioned. Why are Native Americans worshipping a Babylonian goddess? That too is never explained. Why does your landlord assault you the second he sees you? I mean, social commentary, but it's never explained. What purpose did setting the game in the 1980s serve? None! But it does feature multiple anachronistic jokes, including a Fallout reference. They, they're not even commentary, they're just jokes. <laughs> it's St. Alex Jones Red. <laughs> a joke about mask mandates. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Here's a funny one you've never heard bottle caps. Am I right, fellow gamers? Fallout, B bottle caps. Uh, please don't realize this game is just poorly cobbled together garbage. Uh, please don't notice the item description didn't come up or the input prompt is the code to pull up the icon and net the actual icons. You kids like interplay, right? Right? But. It does get better. So a lot of what interests me about the game is in relation to Conclus, and yes, I am still planning to cover the second game, it just needs time. Time for me to find the luggage room. But, finding out I can turn on the TV, watch the entirety of Manos, The Hands of Fate, original programming, and I have access to a telephone with numbers plastered all over the place, showed just how much inspiration and new direction the game was taking. It was Conclus and The Darkness, and a brutal action game set in a time period that could be easily utilized and you'd occasionally speak with a detective. And it was all thrown away after the first five fucking minutes. Fuck you. You speak to the detective who is redheaded and white and is named Ortega once and then she disappears. The TV only gets used in the B-plot, you can't call any of the numbers you find, the hotel and the mystery of where your sister is and the cult are gone, but they weren't intelligent enough to actually make a new game out of what they had. What was going to be a new IP with a bunch of cool ideas became a $25 stopgap between Succubus and Tormentor, and even Tormentor looked fucking bad at Mad Night 2023. And oh yeah, the absolute dingleberry cherry on this shit cake, constant dips into single digit frame rate, and a save system that is non-existent. I played the game for two hours of just dicking around and discovering, and then had to go to work. When I loaded up my save the next day, it put me two entire segments previous, and when it sent me back to the apartment, it sent me back to the wrong apartment segment, soft locking my save. And this issue has been known since day fucking one. The combat has become just mash attack and sometimes you get a canned QTE animation for one of the three melee weapons in the game. The revolver they showed off a lot is gone. There is nothing good or even competent about what they have chosen to release. It is a hack job that was made this way on purpose and Mad Mind has become dangerously incompetent. The game is a scam. It's a bait and switch. It's a game some developers spent years on and then in the 11th hour some fucking dipshit came in and told them to scrap it all so they could staple agony to it like a human centipede and charge 25 fucking dollars for a game so broken you have to open the gamma settings every time you launch it because it saves your settings but it doesn't fucking apply them. Dear Movie Games Lunarium, I know I've been pretty mean to you in the past but it's mostly been in a jokey manner. Look, riffing on the games is all well and good because getting a beach from some German dude can't 
can in fact be scary if it's not wanted. It's all in good fun, even if some of what you put in your games is just kind of annoying. But this? This is not a wise way forward to partner with fucking Madmind. They are going to tank your project. Nice shoes. Trying something different for New Year's? Go back to the fucking closet. I'm not saying this as a joke or to be mean. I'm saying this because I want you to actually be able to continue whatever shenanigans you're on. And this is the road to ruin. This entire situation is bad. Like, the day before, bad. It's so bad I considered reporting the game to Steam as a scam. There are issues that have been obvious and broken since day one that lead me to believe this clusterfuck of a launch was never tested, and this is an insanely poor route for the studio to have chosen to go down, and it does not bode well for their upcoming projects. So, my little sexual degenerates, here's that development timeline I avoided at the beginning so we can have our final release. Around the time of Succubus, Paranoid began development to my recollection. Then it got announced. Then Madmind began acting as a publisher on the side. Then Madmind announced a few more games. Then Madmind managed to get the VR version of Succubus banned from Steam the day it was supposed to launch. At some point through all of this, they decided that their games would now be involved in the Madmind cinematic universe. Then Paranoid was announced it would follow this. Then Mad Night 2023 happened, and they announced five new titles and a fucking mobile runner game like it's 2014, and then Paranoid came out. If I threw all of this out at the start, you would know exactly what kind of product Mad Mind just demanded $25 for. Yes, I saw it coming, but I gave them the benefit of the doubt, and I'm not going to do that for them ever again. But I still have one last thing to do, and I would be remiss if I did not do it. Mad Mind, we need to talk. I don't mean YouTuber making a video you will never respond to haha ha, fun times. I mean you, your studio heads, creative directors, and whoever else is in charge need to sit down with me, someone outside of your sphere, not in your Discord, and not employed by you, and have a very real discussion about where things are going wrong, why it's happening, and how to get the boat back on course before the ship runs aground in a fucking volcano. I have no horse in your race. If Lords of Hell never launches, I won't have lost anything I can't recover in a single shift at work. Who I am is Alec Baldwin in Glen Gary Glen Ross. I'm here to tell you that coffee is for closers, and you've not closed in three goddamn years. On December 8th of 2021, you publicly announced that you were going to start helping people publish games, and I questioned the wisdom of that if maybe it wasn't a little premature, to which you essentially asked us to have faith in you. And this bullshit is how you rewarded that faith. If you haven't pivoted to a tax loophole scam in the same manner of the producers, then you need someone on this side to correct you. I'm here to, in the best way I can, tell you what you need to hear rather than what you want to hear. I'm harsh and oftentimes I overstep the line, but my goal is to help people be the best they can be and that requires being told oftentimes straight hurtful things. When a game is the best it can be, everybody wins. But when you pull this shit, you're the one who's gonna lose in the long run. Hard fucking facts. You are fucking up and you have no idea what the fuck you are doing. If you are trying to build a long lasting studio with a deep connection to your fans, you have torpedoed that. Based off that last bullshit presentation you pulled, Tormentor is looking like shit, like it's going down the exact same route as Paranoid. Why the fuck is the physical embodiment of sin that delights in doling out excruciating physical harshness sitting on a fucking computer? Does he need to file his taxes? Is the real Tormentor the IRS? Is he checking the Carfax before he anally fists some dude with a handful of Crisco? Does he need to download some fresh Pepes? How the fuck will this shit in any way improve the setting? What the fuck were you thinking asking $4 for an Ono Skelis DLC that looked worse than a mod for Morrowind in a game with an Ono Skelis that you can compare it to? Whoever okayed that, whoever okayed this shit with Paranoid, needs to be taken out back and asked to clean out their 
desk because whoever is steering this vessel is driving it into a fucking whirlpool. Your name is Mud right about now, and if Tormentor is anything less than bog standard AAA average, your name will be shit forever. You are on the precipice of being only known for pumping out low effort garbage to scam unsuspecting customers. You and I need to talk because you have six fucking games in the works with nobody working on them and changing them at the last minute. This World of Agony bullshit isn't going to destroy your games, it's already doing it. Tormentor is already looking like you've pivoted into menial bullshit depriving it of its identity. What the fuck is Sanctus gonna look like now? What about Jin? How will Jin be any different from Sanctus if they're the same fucking story? Will Siren ever come out? Cause that looks interesting as fuck, but will you be around long enough to fuck it all up? How quickly are you looking to destroy what you built, bury it under old Babylon and hide it from the eyes of God. Will you still be here two years from now? Will you have maintained enough goodwill and intention to still be allowed on Steam? Will you piss off your entire base? Because you asked us for faith when I was voicing concerns about you moving too fast, and this is how you thanked me. Call me. Email me. Discord message me. Meet me in southern New Mexico so we can talk about this while hunting Chupacabra. But get in touch with me. For real, not some dumb corporation meets entertainer bullshit, because you are fucking up royal, and unless someone sits you down and sets you straight, you're only going to get worse. Help me help you, because I was absolutely excited about what you had on the horizon, and with one trash presentation and release so botched an outsider can see everything you did wrong, I don't have a single shred of faith left in you. Whoever okayed this shit needs to resign. And whoever decided $25 for this game was acceptable should be fired. And all I'm asking is the chance to help you get the ship back in order. I'm the Necro Swanson, and I got the achievement for not dying in a single playthrough despite having died twice!